Hey guys, welcome back. Ivan Blasquez here, certified exercise physiologist. What I want to discuss today is the effect of exercise on autophagy. Now typically this topic has been covered from the dietary perspective and I'm going to cover it on the exercise perspective. I want to start off by saying that it's not fasting and exercise, it's diet and exercise for a reason, okay? So fasting, when I think of fasting, okay, whether it be, you know, 16 hours or 24 or 48, I think of it as compensatory adaptations. In other words, we're riding out our body's, you know, machinery that's being activated for survival, okay? Now, that's good, all right? But I also think that the, the, we want to be careful in terms of, you know, how we view that. Uh, a lot of times we can get enamored and kind of fall for the fad rather than really kind of um, adding it to the toolbox, so to speak. So some people will just go all in, you know, on fasting, whereas I think we should incorporate it sensibly because at the end of the day, this thing is all about having balance, overall balance, okay? So a, a human can only fast so long. So I think the research that I've read anywhere from 30 to 40 or maybe even 45 or so days before um, they have some severe uh, symptoms and potentially can, you know, we can starve to death, okay? So there's, there's, there's obviously that truth. Um, and so what happens is you have autophagy, which is self-renewal, right? Um, and then you, so a little bit of autophagy is good, okay? And even moderate amounts is good. But if we get too much autophagy, you know what happens? We get self-cannibalism, okay? Our body starts to eat itself to death, all right? So if our body eats itself a little or moderately, that's fine, right? But obviously too much of anything can be a problem, and this is, a case of, and this is the case that's being made here. So we need food to survive, okay? In fact, like I said, we can only survive so long without food, right? So that kind of comes back to my compensatory adaptations. We're riding adaptations. So we need food to survive and live a long, healthy life, all right? The key is caloric restriction. So caloric restriction is key, guys. I talked about this in my video, how to feast, how to, how to increase autophagy feasting. All right, you guys, so now we're going to get into the exercise component of autophagy. Um, so I'm going to take your attention to study number one and study number two. So in the first study, what they did was they had participants do a 36-hour fast or there was, um, they were infused with glucose before and during exercise, okay? So that, that's to kind of simulate a fed state. Um, and what they found was that um, fasted exercise, 36 hours fasting before the exercise bout did not add to the autophagy benefits compared to the glucose infused group, okay? So that shows that exercise can induce autophagy independent of nutritional status. That's important, okay? Um, that just goes, because there's some who believe that fasted exercise can increase autophagy, and there's some research to suggest that it does, but this research is suggesting that exercise in and of itself has a significant uh, stimulatory effect on autophagy, okay? All right, you guys, so I'm gonna have a seat here, but essentially the second study, what they found was that they looked at intensity, okay, the intensity of exercise, and high-intensity exercise increased autophagy regardless of whether the group was fed or fasted. Again, kind of showing how exercise has an independent effect on autophagy regardless of nutritional status, okay? But what they found was the most effective strategy to increase autophagy um, in skeletal muscle, specific to skeletal muscle, although some studies have also shown that exercise can boost autophagy in the brain and, and other organ systems, okay? But in this case, specifically skeletal muscle, um, that it seems to rely on exercise intensity more than diet, okay? So the most effective strategy to increase autophagy seems to rely more on exercise intensity than on diet, all right? Now, let me just close it out. Now, both resistance training and endurance training increase autophagy, but more so with endurance training. Studies, there's more studies to show that endurance training does. There's, more re there's some studies that show that resistance training does. Now, the one thing that they did find was that consumption of 
um, branched chain amino acids or essential amino acids plus carbohydrates post-workout, right? When I've talked about this in videos, again, it depends on one's goals. But for the majority of the population, people just want to get healthy, get leaner, and build muscle, right? So possibly we could actually um, we could actually nullify this autophagic um, effect if we increase our consumption of um, carbohydrates plus protein post workout. Okay, so if one is an athlete and you need to you know be prepared for your next event or competition, then this. You know, autophagy, we're not thinking about that. You're thinking about performance and being the person's fit enough as it is, they're working very hard, they're probably going to override this. But for the general population, this is why I talk about how the whole bodybuilding, a lot of the advice and things we know, unfortunately, stem from the bodybuilding community. And the more I study this, the more I find that a lot of that advice is flawed because it's coming from the extreme the extreme view of just building muscle at the expense of everything else that's going on in the body. All right? So... Um, I would say it'd be better to have a meal before the workout rather than a post-workout meal, okay? Especially if fat loss is, is, is important. As, as we know, autophagy is connected with fat loss because it's a, primarily a catabolic function of self, um, you know, cannibalism in, in, in a healthy range, of course. So both of these stimulate autophagy. Let me go ahead and finish this out, guys. So it seems that exercise has, there's a paradoxical exercise effect with autophagy. And this kind of ties in with the synergistic science. In other words, we really don't know at all. Um, so exercise can induce autophagy, but it decreases muscle loss. In other words, exercise increases muscle, right? It increases our muscle mass, right? Whether it be by actually increasing it or by, or by, or by preventing uh, muscle loss. It prevents muscle loss. So we have exercise, because when we increase muscle, that's an anabolic, anabolic function. And so what's fascinating is, it seems that there's a synergy, right? So we get some autophagy, we also get some mTOR expression from intense exercise, resistance training, or high intense exercise in general. Um, but again, a lot of these things can be um, adjusted based on our nutritional status, okay? And also what we eat, right? So with that, guys, uh, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And thank you guys for watching and tune in next time.